Well, here we are. Welcome back to another episode of Where I Shop Sustainably. Good morning and or afternoon or evening, whatever time of day it might be for you. Welcome back to my channel, guys. My name is Christy. If you are new here, I make videos about living a more well and intentional life. As I mentioned in my last video, I've been doing a little bit of decluttering lately and kind of just trying to get as present and kind of bringing minimalism back into my life a little bit. Ever since I started moving, I've kind of like gone through all of my clothes. I have two big bags of clothing to sell online right now. And last weekend, I finally officially went back to my parents house and moved all of my stuff out last remnants of all the things that I had there so I'm officially moved out I'm an adult I'm a human being and this is adulting and I don't know how I feel about it today is the day that I finally clean out my room I no longer live with my parents and this is weird these are the things that we have left oh man these are like old cell phones I thought that I could share with you guys a few of the things that I've been decluttering and things that I'm going to be posting online as well as sharing all of my tips to for your gateway of selling things online and being able to declutter your own things and giving your things a second life because I personally am such a proponent for unless you have a really good charitable organization in your town that is worth donating to a lot of things that end up in most conventional thrift stores end up in landfill essentially at the end of their life I think there are several ways to give your clothing a second life or a longer lifespan and one of those many ways is by directly selling things to other people which then cuts the risk of it ending up in landfill which obviously we like because we love our planet and we want to take care of her and we love mama earth very much right 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 so closet here's my closet a lot of things have been cleared out of here recently and I have two big Ikea bags like I just said of things that I'm going to be selling online and coincidentally Poshmark reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in having them sponsoring a video and me trying out their wonderful website so of course I was super stoked about that because I'm an avid consumer of Poshmark but I've never actually sold on it I think there are so many wonderful secondhand platforms online and only one of them I've ever sold through so what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna experiment with the different platforms online and try and testing a few pieces here and there. I'm super pumped to try Poshmark because I've bought from Poshmark several times but I've never actually sold on it. So I do use it but I haven't used it in this way yet and I'm super pumped to try it out. Yeah, I definitely think there are so many different online platforms for you to sell and just finding the one that works for you is so important So I definitely encourage you to try the same so if you want to set up your own closet on Poshmark You can use the link in the description box and I'll also leave the link to my own Poshmark closet in the description box below Because I'm going to show you guys a few of the pieces that I have decluttered and I'm going to post on there so I have these vintage Tommy Hilfiger jeans that I really like they're like these beautiful mom jeans I actually thrifted these like a year ago, but they were a little bit big on me when I bought them and they just don't fit me but they're these super cute Tommy Hilfiger jeans and they even have the little like Tommy logo on the butt and on the and on the little patch at the top definitely my favorite pair of mom jeans that I've ever owned and I'm really sad to let them go but I think they're beautiful my color this super cute beautiful yellow v-neck that I also love very much but I just own too many yellow things at this point in my life because we all know that that's my thing right now. <laughs> I have a bunch of free people and Urban Outfitter stuff that I'm going to be posting that has had really light to nowhere at all. These are some super funky, they're, they're like bell bottom style pants that I bought like three years ago when they were going out of business and I was really upset about it and then never wore them. <laughs> so hopefully somebody else can wear them because clearly I, because clearly I'm useless. So. So again, if you're interested in any of the things that are gonna be in my closet, I'll leave a link in the description box below and you can go check it out. I do have a ton of things to post though, so make sure you follow me on Instagram because every time I upload new things, I will 100% update you guys on stories and just leave direct swipe up links so that it's super easy to find. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. Okay, <laughs> just saying. Before I continue with the tips, I am just gonna take a quick little break and record a podcast with my new friend Ish. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about all things being in tech, using tech responsibly, and being a startup founder. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, which as always is linked in the description box of this video. Okay, 
I'm back. So as for my tips on how to sell things online, I've jotted down a list of 11 of them. Number one is to scope out the platform that you're choosing to use and kind of get the vibe of what other people are doing and then look at how you can stand out. What do people's photos look like? What kind of items are selling the most? What are the different types of styles of items that are getting the most views and the most kind of like pull from the algorithm on the main newsfeed and platform? And then how can you stand out from what other people are already doing? So that way you can kind of have your own signature look on that platform so people know that it's you. Number two is to try everything on and use a backdrop in your photos rather than just taking a picture of the actual item. It makes a world of difference just to show how the actual item fits. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna use this wall here and I'm gonna incorporate the plant. Because people just tend to like plants, it adds a nice little touch, but also if I'm using a white wall, then that way there's no distractions in the background so you can just look at the item itself and you can see exactly what it is because sometimes if you're looking at a picture where there's like a lot of things in the background, it's hard to tell like the definition of the items and how how it like looks on its own if that makes sense so that's what I'm planning on doing and I definitely recommend that you have some sort of backdrop kind of going on granted if that's possible within your space and if not maybe you can find a place outside that has a nice kind of like plain wall somewhere number three is to make sure that there's multiple angles of the item how annoying is it when you're trying to find something online and you can't really tell can't really tell what the item is we've all been there we all had that feeling of like seeing something and you're like I just my brain is just having a hard time comprehending like what this item the concept of the whole thing. So make sure you get multiple angles and that goes into my next one which is make sure that the colors in your photo are pretty much accurate to what they look like in real life and make sure that you're not getting any like super exposed highlights and everything is washed out. Especially with black and white items, sometimes just the way that the camera captures them, you can't really tell like what the definition is, what that material is, just make sure that it's like what you're getting in real life is what you see on camera. As best as you can. I mean obviously sometimes cameras just they're not the same as these wonderful things that nature put into our heads. Just try your best to go for it. Number five is to make sure that you're using keywords in your description and also make sure that you're mentioning any sort of brands that the item looks like. This helps so much when people are searching for any specific items. I know that a lot of people as well will also put at some point in their description, whether it's like the end of the item, they'll mention like say you get a shirt and it looks like it could be from free people, then you could include that in the end of the description. Obviously mark what the actual brand is, but if you write those keywords free people in there that when people who like the vibe of free people things are looking for free people your item will also pop up which also happens to fall within their like kind of style I think things like this are super helpful because when I'm personally looking for secondhand items online that's how I start I usually just search the brands that I know I like their style of and then random things pop up into the abyss and if I like them I like them and if I don't then I keep moving. So definitely using keywords describing the color, the cut, the style of item. You can't just say top, you have to say like strappy tank or wrap dress, you can't just say dress. You have to describe what the actual item is and that way people who are looking for a certain specific style of item as well, it'll pop up. Number six, the cover shot matters. Whatever the first photo is that's gonna end up in people's newsfeed, that one matters. Make sure that it's the best, most eye-capturing item that you can possibly have depending on what the newsfeed is like on the app that you're using and I personally am a firm believer that you shouldn't be using ready-made store photos for that item you should style it and do your own photo for that just so that the item stands out and doesn't look like like whenever I see store photos on websites I know on web on platforms like Poshmark you can kind of get away with it because that's what a lot of people do but whenever I see a store photo of it I just kind of like I don't know what it is it just doesn't have the same vibe I kind of dismiss them because I feel like it's like phony or something, I'm not really sure, but I definitely think there's a benefit to styling your own photos rather than just taking them off the internet. Number seven is to sell quality items and stay away from counterfeit items. You really wanna curate a nice shop so that people know what to expect and know what they're finding and the better quality items that you have, the more likely they are to come back. And also you just don't wanna sell counterfeit stuff because it's illegal, so. Number eight is to add items regularly. This will bring people back and kind of give some action to your shop. That way you have regular traffic and it's not like it's just a, and it's not just like a one-time thing or a biannual thing. If you really space the time out in between each time that you're posting, you're gonna have to work all over again to garner an audience. So posting regularly is key. Number nine, since we're all about sustainability and we want to encourage sustainable purchasing 
practices. I recommend using secondhand shipping materials if possible. If you live in an apartment building, you'd be surprised at what kind of cardboard boxes and things would be in your recycling bins outside of your building. Maybe you live in a family where people are frequently shopping on Amazon or maybe you shop online sometimes and you have extra boxes and things to use. Reuse those things as much as you can. And then additionally, whatever businesses are in your neighborhood, whether that's a coffee shop, even your local FedEx and mail places, a lot of the times they have extra boxes or extra shipping materials that they were gonna throw out. So just taking a cruise around town and seeing what you can grab from different businesses is huge and that saves tons of resources and money for you and then you get to reuse things one extra time without them ending up in landfill. Number 10, this is more of on the shopping front, but be aware if you are looking to buy on these platforms to be sustainable, make sure you're aware that there are some people who are now using these platforms to sell new items where they're buying items in bulk from fast fashion like manufacturers wherever they can get their hands on them and then they're reselling them. So just be aware that just because you're shopping on these platforms doesn't mean that everything is secondhand because it exists and it's out there. Don't fall into the trap, my friends. Number 11 is that on Poshmark, it's really important to share other people's pieces because from what I've heard is that the more you share other people's, then they'll come over and look at your shop and, and the chances are they will share your items to their newsfeed just as kind of like a reciprocal, like kindness for kindness kind of thing. And then that way it brings exposure to the items that you have posted and you can kind of capitalize on that. So being a good friend, really helps other people and it might help you in return and I think it's important to share pieces that you like as well because that kind of will like bring in people that have a similar style to the items that you're going to be selling and kind of like creates this foster environment for other people who are interested in a similar style. Before this video is over don't forget that you can support this ethical and sustainable channel over at patreon.com slash Sedona Christina. If you can't afford to be over on Patreon then that's totally cool. Make sure you share this video with a friend. Don't forget to hit subscribe, follow my Instagram, subscribe to my podcast which is linked in the description box below and goes out most Mondays. And of course you can sign up for my email newsletter where I share random zero waste, self care, sustainable podcast recommendations, documentaries, music playlists, like whatever's on my mind that week, it goes into my email newsletter, which you can sign up via the link in the description box. Of course, if you wanna get a closet started on Poshmark, you can also do that via the link in the description box. And until next time, remember to stay happy, humble, and forever compassionate. And I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for being you, and thank you for taking an interest in living a more well and intentional life. Bye.